Welcome to another episode of the Gay Archive Show, where we explore gay history one bar at a time. I'm your host, Art Smith, and today, on this lovely Thanksgiving evening in Wilton Manors, Florida, I'm being joined by none other than Sean Palacios, a.k.a. Kitty Meow. Hello. Welcome. Hello. How are you? It is so good to see you. Great to see you as well. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As am I. I know the South Florida bar history. You have a lot of stories going back into it. We've known each other for a long time, but we're not going to say how long because people wouldn't believe that we're still both in our 20s. <laughs> so we'll leave the time frame alone. But you've had a lot of exposure to the South Florida yes. bar scene. Where did your experiences first start in South Florida? It actually first started on Miami Beach and a nightclub called Torpedo. And this, a very good friend of mine now, his name is Durano Fear, okay? And he is currently, Time Magazine made him the re, king of reality TV. He's done oh, wow. all, he's done, um, you know, Jersey Shore, all of this great stuff, Caesar the Dog Whisperer. And he brought me to their managers saying, you have to have this person do it. I was so young and inexperienced. I was in college at the time, and it was an awesome bohemian scene on Miami Beach. And so that gave me my very first um, entree into nightclubs. Uh, I met James St. James, the guy that wrote Disco Bloodbath, right? He says, if you want to be on cl in clubs, you have to work at the door. So when Paragon came around and I had the opportunity to work at Paragon, they had this beat cattle call and they said, okay, you all get out, dance in the middle of the floor. And I said, I'm not here for that. I want to be at the door. Well, I would look at every magazine. I knew celebrities. So they gave me a little test and bam, grand opening at the door. And I think being in that door gave uh, myself uh, so much notoriety in South Florida. It afforded me the luxury of hosting the European Dance Music Conference in Rimini and uh, Lucioni. I mean, it afforded me the luxury of traveling all over the world and I'm so grateful for it. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize going back into the South Florida scene, it had a vibe that was kind of like a renaissance of the club kids yes. in New York. Yes. People don't realize that. You now the club kids, as you were mentioning, James St. James, mm -hmm. Um, you know, they all had kind of, um, an energy that was, was different. It wasn't drag and it wasn't, you know, street or goth or whatever. It had its own style yes. and Miami picked that up and ran with it. And you yes. have kept that alive for a few years. Oh, um, myself and a few others. I have and to, a few others. Yeah, yes. yes. So when, when we first actually, um, joined the other forces like Adora and um, a Paloma and all these incredible talents on in Miami Beach, they really helped us go into it. I was in fashion school, so I had friends that would design outrageous outfits and they would loan me the stuff. Uh, James, those taught me how to use a glue gun. And I then took, my friend said the other day, you would take pizza boxes and turn it into couture. Well, I mean, you know, that was the club kid thing at the time, but it was, yeah, it was so much fun. I, I interviewed, um, Ernie Glam, who was also a part yes. of that New York scene. And he still, to this day, does that. Yes. He still takes pizza boxes and mm. makes them into, you know, outlandish outfits and at, roughly 60 years old, is still going out in the party scene in New York and, mm -hmm. and talk of the town. So there's still some that are that are kicking around. My headpiece right out right over there was originally the cover for my hamper. <laughs> I made it a big hat, like it would go on design, but I always took things that I could utilize uh, to be creative with, uh, you know, to kind of push the envelope. I, I mean, my I showed my sister my, my, my first drag pictures and she's like, God, you look awful as a woman, right? So I thought it was never ever gonna work. So I had to utilize, I, I celebrate, I celebrated female fashion and the form and all of that, but uh, tucking was terribly uncomfortable and a wig looked like I was sitting a chair on my head. So, I mean, it just never really worked, but actually it helped me ultimately in the end. Well, yeah, and as, as you can tell now, you're still carrying on that look. Yes. You know, decades later, people still recognize you. They look at your old stuff from, you know, 20, yes. 30 years ago, and they're like, wow, this was, you know, ahead of its time. I mean, today, it's, it's starting to get, you're starting to see more of that, especially, yes. you know, as we're in Wilton Manors now. And this drive here, it's pretty much anything goes. I mean, you can Absolutely. walk down the street like that tonight. You could walk into 
you know, a nice Italian restaurant and have a meal and nobody would bat an no eyelash. No one would bat a lie, an eyelash. Everyone is like so welcoming, and especially now in Wilton Manors, because it is truly the epicenter of arts, entertainment and culture. And the gay LGBTQ uh, scene has just flourished here unbelievably. I call right over to the corner, the, the Bermuda Triangle. Uh -huh. I mean, there's clubs in every single direction. And I said to my friend who was just visiting, I said, listen, if you stand in, uh, you know, in the parking lot at Hunter's, for, uh, for, if you stood there, you could see every other club or know where you wanted right. to go if, if you were not done in Hunter's. So it, it's really, truly been uh, a remarkable experience to leave Miami Beach, come here and see that the opportunities still exist, even for an old gal like myself. <laughs> <laughs> we wish a lot of the young people had the energy and the style that you do, because we don't see that everywhere. And you have really, I mean, you've come through year after year with the same kind of energy, the same kind of vibe, and always a fresh twist. And in fact, tonight, which you know, will be in the past by the time you see this. But tonight, yes. you're performing at Georgie's Alibi, which is one of the bars yes. that started this whole environment in Wilton Manors. Absolutely. So, you know, it's still, you're still going strong. Now, as you've gone through the years, you, yes. you had your start in the Miami Beach scene. Yes. But you've also seen a vibrant scene in the city of Fort Lauderdale. Yes. There were a number of mega clubs there there was tangerine there was the copa there were all kinds of jazz clubs that were really world-class clubs and now we've kind of seen that transition and wilton manners is really the place i i did for a long time i hosted um white party for jeffrey i did all of these performances for him and when i would do that and go to palm springs every year where there's another hunters uh i do it every year and it, Greg Bernard, he was the owner of the Cobra at the time, uh -huh. and we would run around and, you know, uh, just have a great time. And so he would pay me to use, to put Copa on my costumes. So I'd be on the stage in Palm Springs and, it, you know, representing a club <laughs> in Fort Lauderdale here. And I remembered when we were in college and I started college in West Palm and we would come up and go to the black party at the Copa. And I would hope and pray that they wouldn't cart us to get inside. So we would try to dress up and like be really super cool. But I mean, it's just, I mean, now that it's, like grown up, it's mature. The difference between Fort Lauderdale, Wilton Manors, and Miami Beach is night and day because there's probably one or two gay establishments on South Beach that yeah. continuously, uh, that, that is from, you know, has had some last, lasting effect, one being Twist, of course. But other than that, I mean, it's few and far between. You have to end up going to downtown Miami or you have to drive up here and go, to, uh, uh, yeah. you know, and experience this unbelievable, amazing scene. Now, for anybody who's never been to South Florida to party, maybe, yes. you know, you're a West Coaster or maybe you hang out in New York City and never get out of the, you know, the Mid-Atlantic. South Florida, especially this immediate area, yes. you know, between Broward and Dade County mm -hmm. and even moving down into the Keys has always had a thriving scene in yes. at least one or two cities that you can just party your butt off. And it is no different now. We are standing, as I said, right on the drive. Right outside the street here, we have Wilton Drive, yes. and there are about 25 alcoholic beverage establishments within walking distance of this painting right here. Yeah. Restaurants, bars that you can walk into, you can fly any freak flag you want. They don't care who you are, who you're with, or what you're doing. You can go right down the street and go door to door to door, mm -hmm. find clothing stores, gift stores, Absolutely. thrift stores, anything you want, dressed any way you want, and be totally accepted. It's so all inclusive, especially in Wilton Manors. Uh, the the bit of the fundraising aspects of it. We have awesome uh, groups like Flock Fest. I was on. I was working with Pride Fort Lauderdale for many years, mm -hmm. and we would travel uh, out of state. We we would go to the New York Times Travel Show. Okay, we've gone. We've done it probably about five years, and with the assistance of Mr. Richard Gray, whom has done whom has kept Wilton Manors and South Florida on the map. I mean, it is, we would, we would be in what they call the gay village in, uh, in, in, at, the gay, at the travel show. And at the end of each year, 
all of the uh, cities, all of the countries um, in their costumes would come over and we would be standing in front of backdrops, at one actually being Fort Lauderdale Beach. And it was so amazing, the, the reception we had. And it was all, we were, we were promoting this dynamic, phenomenal scene. I mean, it was, it was truly an honor. We had an amazing time in doing so. Now, what was it like for you when you did those first uh, performances, you first unveiled your, your look that was different from what most people were doing in the club scene at the time? What was it, what's the difference between the response that you got then in South Beach to the way you, you responded to today? Well, I did not know so much that it was really having any sort of effect. I knew that I did not, there were genres that I didn't fit into. And so I just flew my freak flag uh, for as long as I possibly could. And now when I encounter people whom were from uh, the Miami Beach scene, or they would say, you know something, we, you represented us when we felt like we were the underdogs. I mean, Miami Beach was all only muscle boys. It, like in Wilton Manors, it is completely, completely different. And so now, uh, say for instance, I'm doing this performance tonight. Mm -hmm. The people on the flyer, uh, two of them I have never even heard of, but you know, I mean, at least a uh, hundred years later, I still have the opportunity to do so. But the community, the organizations, the establishments that are here, they really, really get, motivate you and give you the opportunity to reinvent or just come and just display your talent. Absolutely. And you know, I see shades of some of the newer performers, the ones that haven't been on the scene, you know, for decades that are, are starting to adopt parts, you know, bits yes. and pieces. Like for example, the first one that comes to mind um, that has been, you know, had some degree of success on television and owns, uh, is an owner of a bar in, in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. is Trixie Mattel. Oh my and God. she, I can see when I look I at your her. makeup and I look at the way Trixie invented herself, it's, there's similar elements that they've you know crossed over so it's still fresh even though you started this years ago well you know something with trixie mattel she originally started her drag was more femme and you know old school girl and she really thought that she was at a disadvantage for doing so so she really she came out she did her thing, but you know, I mean, this is someone who plays guitar, whom sings, whom is so brilliant that she's on the stage by herself and really commanding, uh, you know, 2000 people in an audience. So the fact that she has utilized um, the outrageous, androgynous, over the top aspect to promote herself, it has really been so phenomenal for her success. I yeah. mean, you see all the girls that go through RuPaul Drag Race, oh, yeah. and Trixie is one of the girls that I mean, just I mean, has blown it out of the water. And is truly a standout. I yes. mean, her style is so yes. distinctive and unique that she's not going to get lost in the sauce. I mean, you can see a hundred Miss America lookalikes with the same yes. blonde hair and tiara, yes. and they all kind of start to look alike. But she has cut out her own little slice of the pie that is distinctive, that is just as you have. Uh, and yeah. it's, you know, it's amazing to see it's refreshing. But what is really important about that, too, is that in order for you to be able to continue doing what you do, there have to be open minded club mon uh, owners. And we're seeing a lot of that now. We're seeing club owners that are looking outside the box and they're not looking for someone to do, you know, uh, Dolly Parton on stage. Right, right. They're looking for somebody that brings a unique style and energy. You know what I love about Wilton Manners? Our political establishment is, I mean, just saturated with LGBTQ representation. And so that also gives us the, uh, the, the opportunity for clubs to say, you know something, it's cool, we can do it because our governor, obviously, the, uh, he's so <laughs> silly. No, no, I mean, just silly because he does not, uh, you know, he, he tried and took it all the way to the Supreme Court and was kicked down for it. I mean, when the, when the, when he was being so terrible to us, the girls, 
the, the, the old school girls, the new queens, they all got together. We all got on that bus and went to Orlando. And, you, you know, the, the queen herself, Darcel Stevens, mm -hmm. was really at the forefront of that. I mean, she would bring myself to Orlando at the Parliament House. I mean, it, she, I really, really love the fact that our drag personalities have, has afforded us the luxury of exposure, representation, and making some true money, you know? It's, 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 not, it's not easy, but it's certainly something I, I've been lucky to be a part of. Well, I think we should take this opportunity, you know, because I know she's watching, to tell Trixie that obviously South Florida embraces your look. Absolutely. And we could definitely use a Trixie motel down here in Wilton Manors. I, so if you have, you know, an interest, Come on down to Wilton Manors, two square miles of absolute gayness. Heaven. I mean, I, one of the guys I interviewed referred to Wilton Manors as Gayberhood USA. Absolutely. It's, or Gayberry USA, I'm sorry, Gayberry USA. It is so openly accepting here, yes. it's amazing. And we would love to have a Trixie Motel right on the drive. So come on down. Come Trixie. Come show us uh, how, does, how it's done. You've made such a tremendous mark with your, your visual, your talent, your brilliance. And I think you'd make a remarkable addition to Wilton Manis. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight you're going to be performing at Alibi. What other yes. kind of performances do you do in the area now? Okay, so what I have uh, been lucky to do is when I'm not doing Kitty Meow, I get to put on a suit and I get to MC lots of things at Galleria Mall, so to, so to speak. I was doing Hot Spots Live for uh, almost two years. Then I started doing the Kitty Meow show. And, you know, but when I'm not doing those things, I get to wear a suit. And say, for instance, the world, uh, the kickoff to World AIDS Day mm -hmm. is at Galleria at 8.30 in the morning. And so I get to do that. I get to introduce our mayor. Uh, we get to, you know, just be uh, held, you know, just be represented in that respect. And then later that evening, I get to be the master of ceremonies for uh, a multi-faith a uh, uh, group of individuals that are going to be worshiping for World AIDS Day. So in, in South Florida, what I've realized is that they, they, you never ever have to be pigeonholed. If you want to express yourself uh, in drag, out of drag, if you just, if you're authentic and you're genuine to what you believe, everyone sees it. They receive it, you know? And also, like, when I pretend to be a guy, some people think I'm hot, so I get laid a lot. No, just kidding. <laughs> when you pretend to be a guy. When I pretend to be a guy. When I lived in Tampa, I, I dated a lot. But um, here, I'm trying to be a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you, were, you know, kind of touched on something there about how the community all binds together. Yes. And it's really true. I mean, I, I, we were at a uh, Thanksgiving uh, dinner today that was hosted by one of the bar owners here in Wilson yes. Manors. And there were other bar owners there. There were other community leaders there. Mm -hmm. There was a city councilman there. Mm -hmm. There were, you know, people from all walks of life, uh, realtors and attorneys and everything that all came together, but they all had a common thread mm -hmm. of having a strong interest in the community and doing good things for the community. And now, as we're doing this interview, another bar owner from Wilton Manors. Yes. Who has the... Fabulous club right down the block. Oh, yeah, I so we could say where we are. We could say where can we say? Okay, because okay, so go on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, another bar owner right here on the drive has graciously offered to let us do the interview here yes. in his home, right on the drive, because the street is so packed with activity on a Thursday night, a Thanksgiving night that there is not a quiet place outside that window that we can have a conversation that anybody would ever be able to listen to. So I want to say thank you very much for Mark, to Mark Hunter yes. for allowing us this opportunity because those are the kind of people that are in this community here in Wilton Manors. They, it's not only about what is you know putting feathers in their cap, right. but it's what's good for the community and what's good for the scene. And so we thank you. He, he uh, Mark Hunter and his establishments have always been uh, top tier. In South Florida, in Wilton Manors in particular, every time there are accolades or awards or proclamations, the individuals who receive it happened to be Mark Hunter and his, his staff. Like I said, I was on the board of Pride Fort Lauderdale for several years. 
host. And every time we were doing a special event, he would come and be the presenting sponsor. I mean, we did a Halloween party in Dania, okay, at the Design Center for Dakota. And he sees the, he has the vision to be so involved in the community and just want it because ultimately it brings such a, 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 vis, a, a sense of visibility back to the community. He gets it. He totally gets it. Absolutely. And, and, you know, in a lot of other cities, everybody, it's, it's all backstabbing and nobody wants to help anybody else out. Uh, Mark sponsors a couple of the circuit yes. vehicles that give low cost transportation around town. Yes. He's involved with the flock fest events. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to the pool party on Sunday um, and he's been a yes. sponsor of that without a doubt so, and when you go I mean okay so we would be setting up and Mark's managers are there and they are taking such um, pride in the presentation and the detail you know there's nothing you can't really uh, do anything halfway especially under his umbrella but it, it truly has been refreshing to see that in particular, how, um, how he's so welcoming and his arms are wide open. And I wasn't gonna say anything. I didn't know if we could say where we were. I came in here and I, listen, I'm, you, you, I, I've seen some nice things in my lifetime and I've had some nice tricks, but this place has just blown me out of the water and I'm sitting here like this, <laughs> like I'm not touching a thing. And when you, you okay, so you said hunters. And I heard just hunters. So I was saying to him, okay, I can't wait to meet you at Hunters tonight. And he said, Hunters? We're not doing it at Hunters. We're doing it at Mark Hunter's home. So then I became so braggadocious. <laughs> My roommate said, well, you're not gonna take a lift. I'm gonna bring you here. I'm gonna bring you there. And it's just so cool. It's just it's just yeah. awesome. And we, we're really proud to be involved with this, this community. And, uh, seeing how it's so inclusive, welcoming, and how it's just, I mean, God, it's just growing every single day. It and it, you know, it never seems to stop. There's always something fresh going on. Um, one thing about Hunter's over here at the nightclub is that, you know, if you ever have walked into Hunter's nightclub here or the one in Palm Springs, yes. you're going to see what exactly what Kitty's talking about when. She mentions that there's an attention to detail and everything has to be just mm -hmm. right. His clubs are amazing. Yeah. You, you know, back in the day, we were happy to walk, you know, crawl over a gravel rock into a tunnel in a back room <laughs> that we couldn't see in front of our face yes. just to be able to have a drink with another gay person. Yes. And now there are club owners like Mark who build these places that are, you're so proud. You want to bring your grandmother and your yes. mother and your neighbors and say, look how beautiful this place is. And we are here and we're proud to be here. Is that, and it's so, so it's just remarkable because to enter um, an environment like this, you are first. You obviously it's breathtaking. It's extremely elegant, and I I just you know you that's a given for someone whom is successful. But to then translate that into a business where you are welcoming people from all over the country, there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a time at the tea dance at Hunters where um, there's a, love is in the air. Okay. And everyone on that dance floor for, from the beginning of tea dance to the end, but when, when it comes to that like climax, you, you feel like you're in such an unbelievable place. You feel proud. You don't, I mean, you know, for a long time, uh, we, uh, I'm standing on the shoulders of individuals whom suffered just to give us the opportunity to do this and walk around and be cool. And so when we go to local establishments here, many of them are, Many of them do their best at what they do, and certainly Mark is at the pinnacle of all of that. I want to run down a couple of bars from South Florida yes. that, that have had some impact and that people have heard about, and I know that you've had some experience with. So just say something brief about them, you know, a brief overview of what they're like. Paragon. Yes. Well, the Studio 54 of the future. The, uh, Patrick and Dennis took what they thought was so brilliant, uh, brought it to South Florida, spent money at it, and... I mean, just to be able to go by the front, they would have to close down the street so everyone could just get inside. It, I mean, the visuals, the artists that were there, the celebrities that came to play. Remember Paragon had a pool under the stage. So, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty uh, phenomenal. Warsaw Ballroom. 
Uh, the Warsaw Ballroom, Ernie Serrano and Gary Santis creatively uh, transformed it every single time. Suzanne Barsh came from New York. Uh, it, it had me perform as Grace Jones for Madonna. It's just Warsaw and the Versace's. Oh, unbelievable. Mecca. Um, Mecca is, uh, well, you know something? It was so fabulous after hours. We definitely uh, enjoyed that a lot. Uh, but to go from uh, the safety or the comfort of South Beach and then to have to go to a downtown, downtown establishment, Mecca did such a great job at making people believe that it was safe and they would really have a great time there. And so we owe Wendy and you know all those guys are really uh, a really de a great debt of uh, gratitude. Yeah, it was an incredible space. Yes. Um, and what about the Copa here in Fort Lauderdale? Well, in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. What was your favorite memory of something that happened at the, at the Copa? Um, my favorite memory of the Copa was actually being able to work there. And when I traveled with the previous owner, I, I got to absolutely represent South Florida. And he was totally, he was totally into it, you know? Uh, so like I was saying, my costumes would say the Copa on them because it, the Copa was such an institution here in South Florida as well. And some place, if you weren't there during the regular business hours, you could go there later when everything else closed down. So it really served an excellent purpose. And I'm grateful that Greg and all those people, you know, had it, uh, gave it the longevity that it had. And I am so grateful that you are still here in South Florida, still representing, yes. still performing, still putting a face on the scene and doing such a great job with all the charity involvement you get involved with and the, and the civic events and things like that. So I think we should all, everybody that's watching this video should you know, write a letter to the mayor and say that we should make Kitty Meow the official ambassador <laughs> to Wilson Manors and Greater Fort Lauderdale. Well, you know, I thought I was. I, I, I really thought I was. No, just kidding. But uh, listen, there are so many people that represent South Florida in such a dynamic way. And just, you know, to be on the st same stage as someone whom as this new as TV Lords and, uh, and, you know, and then see Electra and Tiffany Ariagas at uh, you know, doing something else. It's truly like phenomenal. I mean, I love the fact that every time we have a big uh, event in South Florida, even if it's in a straight establishment, the Queens are still welcome. They are given the opportunity to mingle and interact. And I, I don't say it as if we're not deserving of it, but it's truly something that is so empowering and we love it so much. Yeah, South, South Florida, Florida is just amazing. amazing. We're so glad that you're here. And we're glad that we had a time tonight yes. to talk to you before you have to go get on stage and, you know, get all energized and, and, and rile the crowd up over there. And we find, you know, uh, there's four of us tonight. So I'm excited. I want to turn it out. I feel so, uh, this is what I am flo uh, floating in there on. Not Special K, which I was previously very well known for, but I, I've been sober for 12 years, by the way. But, you know, I mean, to be in an environment like this, this rocks, this really kicks ass and it really makes you feel special and you really want to go out there and give it your best. It does, and it, it makes you appreciate yes. how, you know, that you're appreciated by the community, yes. that everybody here is not out of, you know, their own thing, Yes, they're, they're in it for the community. So yes. thank you so much for being here. Good to see you again. Yeah.